Now, on America East on campus, a Maine swimmer that beat cancer to get back in the pool to compete again. I've learned that I'm very stubborn, and when someone tells me I can't do something, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to prove them wrong. They're two of the top players in America East basketball, but Tommy Brenton and Brian Volkel are anything but typical basketball players. Whatever it takes, I think that's my role. And one of the nation's best wrestlers continues to pile up the wins with hopes of bringing a national championship to Binghamton. If you don't have uh, scratches or black eyes, and you're not, you're not doing the sport right. It's all right now on America East on campus. From the campus of Binghamton University in Vestal, New York, we welcome you to the latest edition of America East on Campus. We are inside the Events Center here at Binghamton. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Eric Fried. It's a rare, quiet moment inside the Events Center as the crowds continue to turn out to support Bearcat basketball. And now let's take you around America East in our America East notebook. It is the second half of conference play in America East basketball. The race is on for regular season championships, playoff seeding, and the player award discussion heats up. In women's basketball, Chantel Alford won the player of the year award the last two seasons and is on the short list to win again. Also on that list, Albany's Ebony Henry, who's helped lead Albany to first place in the conference. I always see Ebony's fierce. Like fierce competitor like she doesn't want to lose and she's she's like the Rottweiler on our team. On the men's side it's a wide open race with no fewer than a half dozen players that can stake their claim to the player of the year award. One player who's elevated his game and is bringing his team along with him is Hartford's Mark Wakama. He can score in a lot of different ways. He can score from the three, he can score mid-range, and he can score at the rim. So he, he scores what we say on all three levels. Um, and, he, and he epitomizes what we're trying to do. Stony Brook's Jamil Warney may have the inside track on Rookie of the Year honors. He's uh, real mature. I love his demeanor on the court. He never too high, he never gets too low. He's got great hands. But Binghamton's Jordan Reed and Boston University's Maurice Watson Jr have also won Rookie of the Week honors multiple times. Up next, you won't find their names at the top of the scoring list in America East, but Tommy Brenton and Brian Vokel are two of the very best players in the league. They score so many points for their team. You know, when you factor in their assists, and you factor in the rebounds that they get, and you factor in the charges, and the floor burns and all those things, they account for a lot, a lot of points. Those two players are throwback guys that, that the winning's important and they account for a zillion points. They just, it doesn't show up on the stat sheets. America East and the You Can Play Project are committed to ensuring equality, respect, and safety for all athletes without regard to sexual orientation or gender identity. Visit youcanplayproject.org for more information. Stony Brook and Vermont are fighting it out for a regular season championship in America East, and the two anchors of that tug of war are similar players who bring styles to a conference that embraces uniqueness. Tommy Breton for Stony Brook and Brian Vokel for Vermont. I definitely think it's throwback. You know, my dad taught me when I was young to kind of play like that. I would say kind of unique. It's uh, definitely not the traditional kind of uh, basketball player. They score so many points for their team. You know, when you factor in their assists, and you factor in the rebounds that they get, and you factor in the charges and the floor burns and all those things, they account for a lot, a lot of points. And people get way too caught up and how many points and that kind of thing. That's the world we're living in. Um, you know, those two players are throwback guys that, that the winning's important and they account for a zillion points. They just, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet sometimes. They're undersized and don't have a you know, true position and they kind of make their teams click. Both those guys kind of embody, um, you know, what, what their teams are, are all about. I grew up a point guard before I hit my growth spurt, so I kind of, kind of like being that kind of 
pass first point guard and then I kind of kept it when I got my growth spurt in high school and it's been, it's just been with me ever since. He's so unselfish and there's not a lot of those guys in this country. Everyone wants their points and it's about them and it's their minutes and it's their shots and it's he's not about any of that. He's about being unselfish. He would rather get 10 assists than 10 points. I've always been just a uh, pass first. I, I, when I was younger, I was more of a big man, but I just, uh, uh, my dad was a coach and stuff, and that's kind of what, what he preached, uh, just being unselfish. So I just kind of carried that throughout my career, and it's, uh, it's paid off. His passing is, is, is brilliant. I think he'd rather throw, uh, you know, the, the, the Magic Johnson pass, you know, and, and set someone up than, than score the ball. He's always going to rebound the ball. He's always going to compete. He's always going to uh, come up with loose balls. The things that people necessarily don't uh, value, I've always taken a great pride in and uh, just worked as hard as I could to become the best at, at those things. I've known Brian for pretty much my whole life. He's always had that kind of knack just to I'm going to get the ball and you're not going to get in my way. His best quality is he's a winner. I mean, he's about winning. And uh, in this day and age where points are so important to everybody and, you know, stuff that really doesn't matter to him, it's the winning that matters to him. If there's a loose ball, go get it, take a charge, get a rebound. I mean, I really, I'm, uh, I'm open to everything. Whatever it takes, I think that's my role. When there's someone who kind of is similar to you, you obviously want to want to give your best, and uh, obviously for him it's the same. He wants to give his best when we play each other. So it's uh, definitely just shows two competitors going at it, and uh, that's that's what I'm all about. I think we have the same mentality. You know, he's a great rebounder and a great passer, so it's definitely a connection that we have right there. But uh, I think we both have high IQ, so that kind of puts us in the same category as well. So it's just fun to play against him and battle with him. Coming up next on America East on Campus, one of the top wrestlers in the country is a Bearcat. Donnie Vincent talks about his journey with hopes of ending it as a national champion. This is my last year. I mean, if I don't accomplish more than I did last year and the team doesn't accomplish more than I did last year, I feel like I let them down as a leader. Don't miss your team's chance to dance at the 2013 America East Men's and Women's Basketball Championship presented by CEFQ. Join us at CEFQ Arena from March 8th through the 10th. Ticket packages are on sale now. Call 518-442-DANE or visit AmericaEast.com. Welcome back to America East on campus here at the Event Center at Binghamton University. Pat Elliott is the athletic director here at Binghamton, and we caught up with him to talk about what's happening right now with the Bearcats and what he sees in the future. It's a beautiful campus, um, great facilities. It's a world-class academic institution. Um, so it was just there were a lot of things that really um, were in place here at Binghamton. What are some of the things that you've seen and are building on now that you've had a chance to be on the job for a little while, and where would you like to take the athletic program here? Well, you know, we, we want all of our teams to compete f for conference championships. And uh, so, you know, our, my job is to, is to work with our coaches and to work with our student athletes to put that in place to, to ensure that we have the right resources. And I walked into a situation where um, we had our uh, baseball, softball, and tennis facilities being constructed. And um, we right now, they, they were finished this fall, and we had a big grand opening for those facilities. They're world class. I think that brings our, our athletic physical plant um, really top notch in terms of uh, within the league and within the region. Stay with it! Yeah! The basketball program, we know there's a new head coach and a new direction. It's going to take some time to get there, but the fans have always been here. The fans continue to turn out. If you give them a winner again, this place is electric. It's incredible. Um, the way that this community embraces the program. Uh, last year we led uh, attendance in, in the America East Conference in men's basketball. It's really special. It's a very special place and um, night in, night out, our fans come out, our community comes out, our students come out and support our teams uh, win or lose. And uh, we're excited about as, as we rebuild these programs to give back to our fans and to have this place fill up. One of the things that I saw coming in right away was how much the community embraced our, our athletic programs um, and how much uh, of a vital part that the university is in this community. Wrestling has long been a vital part of the Binghamton athletic scene and this year the Bearcats are hoping to have their first national champion and senior Donnie Vincent has a chance to be that champion.
this is my last year. I mean, if I don't accomplish more than I did last year and the team doesn't accomplish more than I did last year, I feel like I let them down as a leader. I feel like we can do better than we did last year. We can have a national champion, two national champions, four All-Americans. I mean, that's not out of the question. Donnie Vincent is in a great position to do a lot of firsts for the program. He's got the opportunity to be the first multiple time All-American. He's got the ability to be the first Division I national wrestling champ for Binghamton University. So what our job is, is to keep it in proper perspective and not make that goal bigger than it really is. And just enjoy this journey, enjoy the process, enjoy the fight that goes along with it. I don't really have the best technique. Um, I'm not the strongest kid, I'm not the biggest kid, but I found a nice, a nice hybrid to really make everything click for me. Uh, the things that I do do, they, they work for me, I do it well. Wrestling is different than every other sport. Um, football games, yeah, everyone gets really loud when there's a football or a touchdown scored or basketball, there's the last 30 seconds or something like that. But wrestling, it's loud for seven straight minutes and then when something crazy does happen, it just really escalates. He does do everything well. And there's very few wrestlers, even the national champs that I've coached in the past, that they're deficient in one significant area, but dominant in maybe two out of the three. Donnie is the rare exception where he is good in all positions. He's not just good, he's dominant on his feet, he's dominant on top, he's dominant on bottom. So whatever position he's in, you know, he's gonna He's in position to hunt down his points and create action, and, and so it's, he's a rare breed. Okay, head outside, baseline D, get to the far ankle. Break You're hoping face. for the grind to finally stop, and hopefully you can heal up, but there's always gonna be that competitive itch. If you don't have this kind of face, beautiful face, but no, if you don't have uh, scratches or black eyes and you're not, you're not doing the sport right, if you look at the national tournament, all the guys in the finals are dinged up. They've got shoulder braces, knee braces, black eyes stitches. I mean, we're going to we're going to finish out a match no matter what. Of the 31 Division 1 conferences, America East ranks 3rd in academics. I know this is based on fact. We are in the elite academically. But I see it every day on my campus and when I talk to athletes from other schools in America East. These are bright young people who are committed to improving their lives and committing to playing their sport at the highest level. Coming up next, school presidents from around the league share their views on the conference. It's next on America East on Campus. You can earn rewards just for supporting America East. Download the free Enthuse app for iPhone or Android and start collecting points by checking in at games and completing challenges with other America East fans. Redeem the points for America East swag, tickets, and more. Welcome back to America East on Campus. In these ever-changing times in college athletics, we ask the presidents of America East what makes their conference a good fit for their institution, and we received a common response emphasizing what should matter most in college athletics. My colleagues and I enjoy being in the America East Conference because we share a number of values. Most important, we all understand the importance of the academic program. We know that these young people are here first and foremost to be students. Secondly, we want to make sure we have the kinds of athletic programs that will ensure that students learn to respect each other, to have a healthy environment, to compete, yes, but to do so in a way that shows that respect that I talked about. If you look at the institutions of America East, we are united by a commitment to, I think, two things. One is uh, high academic standards, and the second is integrity uh, on the field and on the rink and all the places that our athletes compete. I think we've got exactly the right balance between the student and the athlete and what our goals are at the end of that journey. Student first and athletes second. And I think this conference clearly reflects that. There's a very strong 
uh, emphasis on academics as well as uh, being very, very good in the athletic pursuit. These are athletes, but they're students first, and I think that's an ethos, again, that's really shared by my American East colleagues. Um, we value these students, but we want to make sure they get a great education. So I think one of the things that we all have in common is we value academics, we clearly value and enjoy athletics, but we have things in proportion, we have things in perspective, and I think that's important for all of us. I think that we have done a tremendous job collectively with America East, particularly when you look at graduation rates and academic progress rates. It's stellar compared to other NCAA conferences. Of the 31 Division I conferences, America East ranks third in academics. I know this is based on fact. We are in the elite academically. But I see it every day on my campus and when I talk to athletes from other schools in America East. These are bright young people who are committed to improving their lives and committing to playing their sport at the highest level. Breadth of offering, affordability for our in-state students, uh, outstanding athletic activities that the students, not just the athletes, can participate in is something that I think of when I think of the America East Conference. All of the campuses focus on the student athlete. And that unique combination of academic success and athletic success is a hallmark of the American East. If you're looking for a conference where you can play at the highest level and study at the highest level, you can do that in America East. Coming up next on America East on Campus, returning to competition at the University of Maine after stepping away to win a fight against cancer. The hardest part is is trying to figure out what my body can and can't do and how I can still train to get faster but not put my body through that shock. So many doctors and so many like survivors and people tell me that I wasn't even going to be able to swim. They're like, you're going to get in, you're going to be done after a month because your body's going to shut down and, and I'm still here and I haven't quit yet. Connect with America East through its social media channels on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the AE Extra blog. Whether it's Monday Rewind, Trivia Tuesday, Who Knew Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, or Fan Friday, America East is the source for your social media needs. Now for a story of perseverance at the University of Maine. A swimmer who could have given up the sport after being diagnosed with cancer but that only served to motivate Nicole Langlois even more. I could feel the lump growing, so I was kind of nervous about it. So I went and got it checked out. Um, I think it was towards the end of my sophomore year, and they told me it was just inflammation of the milk ducts. Apparently it's normal. Um, so I sent me away with that, and I was like, okay, no big deal. And then it started growing again. So I ended up going back down to Georgetown and being like, okay, you know, something's really not right. And I pretty much asked them to do a biopsy. So they did the biopsy, determined it was cancerous, and then they found out that it spread to the lymph nodes that were in my lungs, too. So from there, I kind of, you know, called Susie and let her know and told her, you know, I'm not going to be coming back to school for a few weeks. I remember opening, you know, that email at my house. I can still... Uh, visualize it and just breaking down like I am now um, and just the thought of a 20 year old having breast cancer and you know knowing that she's young and that she can fight but just the whole the thought of it um, just really tore me apart. It was hard for me I felt I was like crying when I found out I don't know I I it was you don't know what to say in that kind of situation you just want to like be there to support them. Everybody was engulfed in it, you know, because you just on a day-to-day -day basis saw her or heard from her if she was home or, you know, we were just, everybody was kind of in the middle of it and we were her number one support system for that time. They did a lot, actually. And then a couple of the girls, when I shaved my head, shaved their heads with me. You, you can only say so much and do so much, but I wanted to, like, show my support, like, with her. I know it's, like, hard to, like, have to do something like that and... So, like, hair can grow back. So I shaved mine and they sat down right after me and I'm like, okay, me next. And I was like, no, you don't have to do this. Like, it's really okay. Like, I appreciate the support. You don't have to shave your head. They're like, no, we're doing it. I was like, okay. Never once did it cross my mind I didn't want to come back. The first practice back here, I, I thought I was going to die. I think we maybe did like 2,000 yards. I was like, there is no way. And I don't think anybody knew um, where her body was going to be at through everything that they put her through. Um, you know, and she's done remarkably well. Like my body goes through too much exercise or something, I will not be able to get up the next day. So that's the hardest part is, 
is trying to figure out what my body can and can't do and how I can still train to get faster but not put my body through that shock. Right now I'm in remission, which is exciting. I've been for a year. I guess I've learned I'm pretty pretty strong. I mean, stage four metastatic cancer is a big deal. So, so many doctors and then so many like survivors and people tell me that I wasn't even going to be able to swim. They're like, you're going to get in, you're going to be done after a month because your body's going to shut down and and I'm still here and I haven't quit yet. So I've also I've le learned that I'm very stubborn. And when someone tells me I can't do something, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to prove them wrong. It just shows me how strong of a person she is and she didn't let this stop her from what she wanted to do and achieve in her life. So she's a really strong person for that. I think not many people are like that. Before all this happened, I wanted to be a physical therapist. And now I know I want to be in the cancer ward somewhere. Like I want to be helping people. and. But the biggest thing that got me through everything was when I'd have doctors or nurses come and talk to me and be like, okay, this is what's going to happen. I went through this too. I know how you're going to feel. That helped me so much, so I want to be able to do that for people. And I don't know if I want to do sort of like a social worker, wellness worker type of thing, or if I want to go into like nursing, but I definitely know I'll be work with cancer patients. Definitely. <laughs> And that will just about do it for this edition of America East on Campus here at Binghamton University. For our crew, I'm Eric Freed. So long from the Events Center.